Hello Geekies, and welcome back to another episode of the Pop Box. I'm Chit Chat, and on today's episode, we've got quite a few things to unbox. I don't know if you can see this, but woo! Welcome back everybody, thank you so much for joining me on another episode of the Pop Box and hopefully I can keep this trend going of getting these out had a reasonable time. Basically, I went to Hot Topic and picked up a couple of pop figures that I've been waiting for. Um, specifically, the Spider-Man and Hawkeye uh, together, um, which is really, really weird. I don't know why they stuck Hawkeye and Spider-Man together. If anything, you think they would put like either Spider-Man and like a different version of Tony Stark, maybe just him, you know, in casual. Um, or even like Ant-Man to go off of the Ant-Man Spider-Man thing. I don't know, just it seems weird to put Hawkeye in there. And I'm not a huge fan of these boxes, mainly because um, I like to display them this way and I don't have an individual box for these characters. So I don't know what I'm gonna do for that, but I am really excited not only to get Hawkeye, but definitely to get Spider-Man. Hawkeye, for those of you that don't know, is one of my all-time favorite Marvel characters. In fact, the more recent uh, run for Hawkeye um, is one of my favorites. The art style is amazing and the writing is hilarious. I absolutely love it. If you haven't read it, it's a great read. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and let's open up this one first. This one might be a little bit more difficult just because it's a bigger box, but... Oh man, this... <laughs> okay, this is a little bit more tough than I imagined. It does not want to come out. I actually like that. I didn't notice it before, but the background on the box is like the uh, the Civil War kind of logo with uh, Captain America's shield all busted up. All right, so let's go ahead and go with Spider-Man first. This is fantastic. I am in love with this new costume design. I really like the separated parts and I'm really glad that they're keeping that for the Spider-Man movie. In fact, there was a couple of stills that were released not too long ago. And uh, this pop is really, really great. And it looks like the shield is actually removable. So that's pretty cool. So if you don't want him to pose with the shield, you could just snap that right off. But you know what? That was such an iconic part of the movie. Him grabbing the shield like it was nothing. Um, it was amazing. And uh, it's really cool. I was always a fan of the Ben Riley costume of Spider-Man, not the one that he starts off with, with like the hoodie, but the one that he gets when he actually takes over for Peter Parker. Um, I always liked the gauntlets on the outside look. It just, I don't know, for whatever reason, it just seemed more appealing to me. And that's one of my favorite things about, you know, this version of Spider-Man is that the, the, uh, the web shooters are on the exterior of the suit rather than the interior. And even the web cartridges, at least that's what I'm gonna assume is on the belt. Um, are present and not inside the costume because you think these are like spandex suits It'd be really weird to hide like all these cartridges inside of a suit So having it be an external component is really nifty and there goes the shield So I'm gonna go ahead and put spider-man down. Oh, this is really cool So one of the things that kind of bothered me about Hawkeye. Oh, that's really really cool So you got you know all of his arrows back there. That's a really nice detail I like that he's in kind of like an action pose um, the one thing that's always bothered me about Hawkeye in all of the movies is that they can't really seem to decide on what his color is. And his costume's always been so desaturated. And all of like the press images or like the photoshopped images where they kind of just stick the actor's face on like a drawn body, they always have it be a much more brighter color. So, I mean, they were kind of going for like that magenta thing. And then for Civil War, it looked like they were gonna come out with like his purple, you know, the iconic purple. But even in the movie, it's still crazily desaturated. And it's like, well, why even bother? So at least for the pop figure, they brought out the purple. But I would love, I would love if they did a classic version of Hawkeye for a pop figure. That would be amazing. And they just started doing some of the other characters from like, like they did a classic uh, Doctor Strange just recently. And like, if they did a classic Hawkeye, I would be absolutely, you know, just, ecstatic all right so let's move on let's keep the marvel theme going i was crazy excited for a spider gwen pop figure and that was what i thought was going to be the pop figure in the women of power box until i found out that they were doing three different spider gwens um this one's the hot topic exclusive which is her with her hood down and her mask off they did two other versions one with just like regular spider gwen with the hood up and her mask and then they did one with just the hood up without the mask and that is unfortunately a Walgreens exclusive so good luck with that one. So this is a great 
pop figure. And I'm so glad that Spider-Gwen is getting a lot more attention because the idea of the character is pretty great. I'm not a huge fan of the Gwenpool just because I feel like they're stretching that concept a bit much just for the sake of doing it. Um, but I could be wrong about that. It could be a great book. I don't know. But Spider-Gwen, I love it. And I love that she's been kind of brought into the main universe. So who knows? I mean, it'd be really cool to even see her as like a custom character skin for the new PS4 game that's coming out. I doubt that will happen. But if they did it, that would be pretty cool. All right, so that's it for Marvel. So let's move on to some more anime-ish stuff. Uh, starting out with Trunks from Dragon Ball Z, Future Trunks specifically, um, which I have been so excited for ever since I heard it came out. Um, he's not the only one in this new line. You've got Gohan, the younger version of him, you've got Krillin, and you've got Majin Buu, and they also did a young Goku riding on a Nimbus, which was really, really cool, but hey, I kind of have to pick and choose my battles at this point because uh, collecting can get a little bit expensive. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up this. Um, Trunks was honestly, and I think I kind of had a, a bit of a rant about this in one of the Sonic Spinball episodes. Um, Trunks has been my favorite character since he showed up and then behind that would be the teenage version of Gohan when he went Super Saiyan 2 and I really hope that that gets a pop figure at some point because that would be really really cool. Just more Super Saiyans in general. I mean Pop and Funko seem so obsessed with doing exclusives and variants and stuff like that. You could go with the same sculpt and then just change the hair for these guys you know so I would figure that would be a win-win but this is really, really, really cool. I love it. I love that he's got the sword out of the sheath and everything. And like I said, Trunks has been one of my favorite characters from Dragon Ball Z. You just, you, you came into the show, you messed up Frieza and you messed up King Cole and it was the coolest, like what, two episodes ever? Cause stuff actually happened. So very cool pop, super excited for that. And last but not least, I mean, I figure, you know, the new show is out, which if you haven't seen it, if you haven't seen it on Netflix, it's worth the watch. And that is, what am I doing? I'm already opening this up, I'm getting too excited. Is Voltron, Defender of the Universe. A little Peter Cullen action there for you. Um, the new show is actually really fantastic. I watched it all in one sitting, because hey, I don't have a life. Um, but it's definitely worth a watch. Um, I've seen the original Voltron and even some of the newer ones where it was like the younger kids were taking over for the original pilots. And that one was okay, but this one is really, really good. It's worth a watch. Wow, they did a lot of detail on this guy. It looks fantastic. This just makes me wish they had a Megazord pop figure for the Power Rangers. Oh, this is cool. All right, let's get a close up on this guy. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. He's got the sword and everything. It's fantastic. Um, normally, I've noticed with like some of the Funko uh, Pops when there's like a lot of color in them, there'll be like a lot of mistakes. And I'm pretty meticulous about that. Like I'll look at a bunch of different boxes and try and find all the little problems with it. Um, for instance, I actually have an example here of one that I totally missed, but it's actually kind of cool. Um, I have Stormfly from How to Train Your Dragon and he's actually missing the tan on his stomach So uh, I didn't notice that until after I got him I'm like, you know what? That's kind of cool It's like a mist paint, but what drives me crazy is like the the little like imperfections um, Which you'll see a lot in like the eyes and stuff Especially if they're a different color other than black, but they did a pretty good job on this. I'm really impressed um, There is a different version of this and I believe it was I want to say it was an it's either a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive or maybe it was even an Anime Expo exclusive where it was like a metallic version of this. I want to say it was Anime Expo, but I could be wrong. Um, but just the standard one's really cool. And again, if you haven't checked out the show, I highly recommend it. And that's going to do it for this unboxing. I know it was a lot to get through and I'm sorry, the video might have ran a little bit longer than I intended. But hey, if you like this content, please hit that like button and subscribe to the Super Geek Friends. Become a geeky today. And until next time, I'm Chit Chat and I'm going back in the box.